Good morning all, another chip on breadboard and this time it's a 74LS 374 which is actually um, an octal D-type edge triggered flip-flop and uh, I've managed to get it to light these LEDs, there are eight LEDs connected to this 8-bit latch, uh, to light them one at a time. Now it is being clocked by this um, 555 timer over here but that's just running at a few hertz. But uh, yes, a light chaser using an octal latch. Now, to get this to work, I've had to do a couple of things. I've had to wire every output of the octal latch to a corresponding input, but not the same input that is the output. If you see what I mean, I'll show you on a circuit diagram shortly. The other thing I've had to do is I've had to set up an initial condition because it doesn't naturally do this rotating light show um, automatically you have to kind of force it to do it. Uh, you'll notice also that I've put the LEDs slightly at uh, angles to make the circle more of a circle because it wasn't quite as impressive when it was just two rows of flat LEDs. So let's have a look at this initial condition thing. Um, if I switch this unit off, turn the 5 volt power off, I've just got four AA nickel metal hydride batteries in here, and then switch it back on all the LEDs come on and uh, I have to go through a process to get it to um, cycle them in sequence. So the first thing I have to do is um, reset the output control. That's a tri-state control on the outputs of the eight latches. By doing that, they've now all gone off. Now, if I hold down that output control, you can see that by pressing this button, I'm seeding one of the LEDs from a low to a high. And if I leave that high on there and then let go of the output control, round goes the dot. That's cool, isn't it? So I think the best way to understand this is to look at the block diagram for the 74LS374. Now this datasheet lumps the 373 and the 374 into one datasheet, but they are different. Uh, the 373 is a D-type transparent latch and the 374 is a D-type edge triggered flip-flop. So the block diagram for both these chips is here. Um, now we're working on this one, the 74LS374, and uh, it consists of eight uh, edge-triggered flip-flops. Edge-triggered, we can see the little triangle there. I'll come down to one of these lower ones, probably easier. The little triangle there means it's edge-triggered. The little circle there means it's negative edge-triggered, but there's another circle on the common uh, driver that comes from the clock input which is also an inverter which means that this clock input is actually positive edge triggered to latch data into all of these flip-flops simultaneously. Now on the output there's an inverter but there's another inverter so it's effectively non-inverting. We've got eight tri-state drivers so these can be turned on in which case the output will follow the output of the latch or they can be turned off uh, in which case the output is tri-state. It's in a third state, which is high impedance. It neither pulls high nor pulls low. So on my breadboard, I've got the 555 timer simply putting a, a clock into this clock input. And I've got the output control, uh, which is active low, tied low, so that these tri-state drivers are not in their third state. They're actually sending the data that's coming out of these latches to the output pins. Now I've wired it so that each output is connected to the next input. So 1Q goes to 2D, 2Q to 3D, 3Q to 4D, 4Q to 5D, and so on, all the way down the line, uh, 7Q to 8D, but 8Q goes back to 1D. So they're all skewed. Now, the other thing I've added is uh, eight LEDs. So you can see the eight LEDs here. I haven't put resistors um, in the uh, path of these LEDs because you don't actually need them. Um, I'll come back to explain why that is shortly. So these are LEDs. They're all uh, connected common cathode to ground. Now, the other thing I've done is I've tied a 10K resistor to all the inputs, well, between all the inputs and ground because I wanted to make sure that when these tri-state drivers are turned off, and that's done by pushing that button, 
then all of the inputs would pull low so that all the outputs to the LEDs would go off because I wanted when this was seeded with a one like that I wanted one light traveling around the circle not lots of lights traveling around the circle or seven lights and one gap that just didn't look as good now also on one of these inputs I've got a 1k resistor with a switch to 5 volts and that's this switch here so that if I release all of these drivers to their tri-state then the outputs are not being driven and they're not passing the output of the latches through to the next input so nothing happens if I press this switch which is this pull up 1k on one of the inputs now I can't use a piece of wire to 5 volts I can't pull the input directly to 5 volts because all of the inputs are tied to outputs and I didn't want a situation where an output was driving low and I was pulling high with no resistor so I've put a 1k resistor in there so let's pull that high enable the outputs and the dot travels around the system so what's happening here is that each of the outputs is connected to the input of the next flip-flop so if there's a one on here when we clock the clock, and that's happening repeatedly from the 555, it simply transfers that high output to the input of the next latch, and the pattern is shifted down all the latches. Now the last one is fed back to the first one, so in fact the pattern is rotated around. And uh, just to complete this circuit diagram, I've got a 1K pull down on the output control. Now this is active low. So with that 1K pulling down, then all these tri-state drivers are not in their third state. They're actually driving the output of the latches through to the output pins. But I can briefly press this switch to pull that input up to 5 volts, which makes all these outputs go tri-state. Now the only thing that I can't quite fathom is why when you switch this thing on, all the outputs go high. You'd think that with these 10k resistors pulling the inputs down, then when you get your first clock, they're probably, yes, there is a continuous clock actually coming from this 555, that it would clock zeros into these latches and the outputs would be low, but that's not what happens. So I think it's something to do with the slow VCC rise time. I've got four of these tantalum decoupling capacitors in the corners of this board. Um, let me just take those out for a moment. So without those capacitors in the board, when I switch it on, I get kind of random patterns. There's an individual uh, off LED rotating around. Now, I didn't think that was quite as pretty as, a, as an on LED. Now, I'm switching this on and off, and I'm getting, uh, well, that's a slightly different pattern. There appear to be uh, two off LEDs circling around. But quite a lot of the time, I'm actually getting this all on condition again. Don't th oh, that's an all off condition. All on. Let's give it a little bit longer to reset this time. And a different pattern again. But uh, if I put these decoupling capacitors in, for some reason, it fairly reliably comes on with the all on output state. So the four decoupling capacitors are back in, and yes, it fairly reliably comes on with all the outputs high. Still don't quite know why that is. Uh, so let's press uh, this switch here, which briefly turns the output control uh, off. In other words, these all go to tri-state, so let's do that. That goes to tri-state. Now the inputs are reading these 10k pull-down resistors and feeding a zero through to the output. Now let's hold that low so that we can see the outputs. They are now being driven. And you can see that by changing one of the inputs, um, I'm pulling it high with a 1k and it's being pulled low with a 10k. So I'm not taking it quite all the way to 5 volts, but it's enough to just get a 1 on the input there. And then if I let that go round the circle, it goes. So why am I doing this? Well, this, of course, is part of my uh, minimal 8-bit computer. Um, it's actually one of these two things here. Um, this one is a rotate, well, it's a rotate um, in the upward direction. So it's rotating uh, bit one, which I suppose you could call the least significant bit. You'd probably call it bit zero if you were going to do that, uh, through to bit two. So it's rotating, uh, it would be right. So what's happening is every time it goes to the next LED, it's actually multiplying the data 
on the output of that latch by two. So yes, these are two of my arithmetic and logic unit elements. Uh, one is a multiply by two, the other one is a divide by two element. And I just wanted to uh, put this on breadboard to make sure that this clocking arrangement uh, where you're clocking output data back to the input uh, where the data is different wouldn't cause any sort of bus contention and it doesn't seem to, it's fine. I think that's because these are edge triggered um, flip flops which means that the uh, output only follows the input for the briefest of nanoseconds while these things are actually being clocked. In fact, thinking about it, I've got a feeling that the outputs don't ever follow the inputs at all the inputs are simply latched in, into the outputs on the positive uh, transitional edge of this clock input. Now I'll probably also use a 74LS374 for my one byte of memory. Uh, so here all the outputs will be connected back to their same inputs, mainly by virtue of the fact that all the outputs will be connected to this 8-bit data bus and all the inputs will be connected to this 8-bit data bus. So yes, there will be links across from outputs to inputs. Uh, this D latch here, which is the display latch, which will just have a series of LEDs on it, I think can also be um, an LS374. In this instance, these output drivers, uh, this output, output control, output enable, will be pulled low permanently so that these LEDs are on all the time. Uh, the input buffer for the 8-bit switch will be something different. Now, just one more thing. The other day I made up this micro switch soldered to a three pin header. And the idea of this is that you plug it in uh, right there and it stops the clock because I'm pulling uh, pin six and two, which are linked together with this white wire, uh, either to five volts or to zero volts with this SPDT switch, single pole, double throw. Now, SPDT switch, and a 555, which is a set reset latch, gives you a debounced switch. So I can now single step this pattern around the latch. And this is fully debounced, so I shouldn't get any false triggering when I single step this around the latch. Now, the reason I've done this is because in another place on this computer, we need a single step. Uh, mechanism on the clock so that when we're going through uh, how a program runs we can single step the main clock which will take us through each uh, program instruction in the program memory one at a time and we can see the effect of that in the various parts of the data part of this computer. So that's my single stepper. And uh, if I remove this micro switch from the board the clock free runs again and the dot moves around on its own. So I'm happy. Uh, it looks as though my uh, display latch and my memory latch are going to work fine. And also my uh, data rotator, uh, rotators, one goes one way, one goes the other. They're going to work fine. And uh, also the switch will work as a single stepper on the main system clock. So that's uh, proved the workings of several of these elements. Now, before I go, I was going to explain why we don't need uh, resistors in the legs of these LEDs, and that's because this is essentially the uh, circuit of the output stage of those tri-state uh, gates. You've got uh, an upper transistor here and a lower transistor, so this one can pull uh, high, but it doesn't pull high directly to 5 volts. It does it through a 125 ohm internal resistor. The other transistor pulls directly to ground. Uh, there's also the tri-state logic here with an enable pin so that you can turn both these transistors off and have this output essentially floating around not tied either way. But you can see that if you've got this LED uh, pointing this way with its cathode to ground, then the path from 5 volts is through a 125 ohm resistor, transistor, a diode, and through our LED to ground. So we've got enough resistance here that we don't need an external resistor. This only applies to TTL. CMOS outputs uh, are different. So another chip on breadboard, another flashing light display, and I'm happy that I've got uh, more of the elements of my 8-bit computer working. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch those, and the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. 
is my face here. Cheerio.